Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. We've just had about 67 mil of rain in the last couple of days, which is over two and a half inches. And I thought it was a really good opportunity to do a swale tour. I'll show you the plantings and how they're going in early spring. But more importantly, I'll show you how my swales handle that much water. My swale system was dug about uh, two and a bit years ago and most of these plantings were put in shortly after. So they've been in for just over two and a half years now. So just starting up the top here, my daffodil patch is struggling a little bit within the grass but we'll get on top of that as soon as these other trees grow and provide lots of mulch. Now in here also I've got some tiny little raspberries which are struggling but um, they're just starting to get going. I don't know if you can spot that there. This is one of my apricot trees which is just starting to come to life. It doesn't seem to have much in the way of flowers and I'm wondering if this huge big tagasasti tree next to it is really blocking too much light. I might have to take that down a bit and give this tree a bit more uh, sunlight. Moving along I've got some, a couple more patches of daffodils. I do have some comfrey planted at the edge here but being early spring it hasn't come up yet. My rhubarb is starting to kick in. I only put that in probably about eight months ago and I've got a little section with some black currants. This is another apricot tree and again not many flowers on this one as yet so maybe my theory of sunshine isn't correct but anyway we'll see how we go. There's a few herbs on this side but they are still struggling with the grasses. This apricot doesn't have too many flowers on it either but a little bit more than the other two. Hopefully we'll get a patch of uh, apricots out of that. I might have to cover that over and just protect it a little bit. My tagasasti is still in flower for the bees. This is one of my peach trees with a tiny little flower on it. Over there, this beautiful peach tree is the golden queen. So I'm looking forward to getting some fruit off that hopefully this year. And down here, these are some gooseberries that you, if you saw my peach tree guild video, you would have seen me planting those. So they're just starting to come up now. There's another one. It's another shot of that beautiful peach tree. Look at that. These two Vietnamese mint are yet to spring into life. They need a bit more warmth than what we're getting at the moment. And this is my other peach tree, a red haven. Just gorgeous little flowers. I've got the rosemary that I put in earlier. This is the wormwood that I uh, planted during the peach tree guild video. So that's just starting to kick into life. I think they'll love it where it is. So too, the little oregano that I had planted. That's looking very healthy. I added in some chamomile which is just starting to, to kick in and that'll be great for teas. That's one of the gooseberries. Somewhere in there, there is some comfrey. So moving along, this is what happens when it rains. The swales collect all the water. They stop the rain shooting on down the hill down to the creek and they sink it in. And the trees on the swale help with that sinking of the uh, water into the subsoil. And it actually helps keep them hydrated all through the drier months. Okay, moving out of the water. This is my nectarine tree. I've just got the one nectarine tree in and it's got pretty flowers as well. And I have seen my bees on that one so I really am hoping for some good uh, harvest this year as long as the birds don't get too many and they leave me some. 
I've planted six red currants just near my nectarine and they'll be right in front of, this is a, a black locust, which is one of the support trees. So they're on the northwest side of that. So they should get enough sunlight to uh, produce some lovely berries. As you can see, there's lots of grass to, to manage, but I have been slowly planting some extra trees in to produce the mulch and, and shade the area to help try and get the, uh, the grasses under control. But in the meantime, I cut it and I drop it and it forms some of the mulch layer for some of these trees. Here's one of my olive trees, which it's great to see some new leaves coming on them. That was a really tiny tree when I first put it in. So that's starting to kick in. This is another one of my little olive trees, but it struggled a bit. It got a bit lost in grasses last spring, so I'll have to really try and manage that a bit better. I'm finding on the edge of my swales, I'm getting these little natives just growing. So I'm just leaving those in place and I can choose to chop them later or leave them, depending on how they go. It's really deep in this section. Here are my two hazelnut trees. In one of my chop and drop videos, I featured the area around the hazelnut trees and I chopped this Tagasasti tree and I chopped that one also. So as you can see, this one's just starting to kick into life again. And that'll be huge before we know it. But one thing I did want to show you with chop and drop, you do have to be a bit careful. Here is a stump. I keep watching for signs of life, but I haven't seen any yet. Uh, I have chopped them severely like this before and they've grown back. I think I timed the chop and drop just before the heaviest frost that I've had down here, which actually killed a lot of natives in my garden. So I'm wondering if that has impacted on their regrowth. I have planted some more and believe it or not, that'll be huge in a year or two. guy is slowly getting there. Some of these trees were really impacted with the, the severe frost that we had back in May, but it's starting to get there. Here's my hazelnut, kicking into life. This is another olive tree and I've got a fourth olive tree over there. Here's another sad looking stump, <laughs> but the replacement is coming. Moving through our waterway. I've got an elderberry just kicking into life. I'm hoping to put quite a few of these plants around. It is a pioneer species, so it does grow very fast. It can be chopped but it does have beautiful flowers that you can make wine out of and the berries are edible as well. Behind it there is my, one of my pear trees. I've got one here and one over there. So far these guys have been a bit affected by cherry slugs so they haven't really kicked in well, but we'll see how they go this year. They're just starting to shoot into life. So there's lots of work to do to get this swale area under control, but you know, I've got time. This little tree here is a finger lime. It's starting to get some flowers on it, but I might have to research its positioning. I don't think it's in the best spot here, so I, I might uh, move it soon after I figure out where it will do best. 
Now this is a nice spot. I've got uh, an almond tree here. Well, actually three almonds. There's another one just over there and third one there. They've flowered early and now they're coming out into leaf. Now this is a good vantage point for the top swale. It goes right around the corner there, almost to the edge of my property. But you can drive a tractor or a vehicle or just push a wheelbarrow all the way along. And it goes through there. Nice view down the, the valley from this spot here. I've got a couple of citrus which are looking really sad. This one's a lemon and I've got a lime tree over here which did give me a couple of limes but again that frost got to them. They didn't have enough protection. Uh, I need to get a lot more of these sorts of trees in to buffer them from the winds which are south winds come from there and I've got westerly winds coming through there. So. These guys were planted with really not enough protection and uh, we're paying the price now. I do have another citrus up here which is in a better spot. That one, I think you can just see it there, is a little orange tree. That stump of a tagasasti has been protecting it and that one will grow back to give it a bit more protection as well. This here is probably dead. It was, it's a mulberry tree but last spring as it was starting to shoot we had a frost and it uh, really did it in. So this section through here is really a bit too exposed at this point to support good growth of higher value plants. So my plan is to just really thickly plant this out with some of the quick growing trees and then plant my productive fruit and nut trees sort of into that once that protection's in place. I think this whole end of my swale is not very successful. This is a dead avocado tree. It was going really well until my sheep escaped and knocked all that down and ate it. And then of course the frost finished it off. That little tent also contains a dead avocado. These trees do great though. And there's another dead avocado in there. I'm going to have to, again, plant this more thickly and give them a bit more protection. And perhaps research more frost tolerant varieties. The swale was dug so that you could drive my little tractor down and around. And it's also been good for a little cart I have to bring things from the house up to my hay shed which is up at the top of the property. Now a tree that is slowly still growing and it's got shoots coming on it now is a mulberry tree which has had the most delicious mulberries on it so I'm hoping that will really get some good growth on it this year. So that's my top swale. Now once the water collects here it will sink into the ground and at some point will come out again. But then it will head down to the dam and there's also another swale, which I call my bottom swale, down there. So let's go and have a look at that one. I'm standing here next to my bottom swale, which has got water in it and overnight it has drained out. The water's come down the hill with the big rains and come from the dam, which has filled up very quickly and it's come out my little channel. I went through the plantings fairly well on a recent video, so I won't go through that again, but I'll just show you the water flows in this area. There's some sections of my swales which seem to be deeper than others, but I still feel it manages the water really well. So we'll wander up there and have a look at the overflow.
Everyone's enjoying a bit of sunshine. Certainly nicer than the rains we've had. When the dam was first filled, I was a little concerned that it was going to overflow the wall. So I got the earthworks guy back and he agreed. So we dug out a bit more of this overflow. So that's why it kind of looks a bit, not as well dug as the rest of it because it was done in pouring rain and I've still got to do a bit to repair all of that. But it works well as the overflow and has protected the dam wall. You can see the, the water coming down from the pasture area and that's the overflow. So you can see the dam is full and there's some movement out of the, the dam into the swale. Overnight this dam came up about a foot. I had to relocate a poor little duck and her eggs which were actually underwater with her nest which was built under that boat over there which I think they will have drowned. Anyway she's sitting on them again. Now we'll head over to my roadside swale which feeds water in off the road. So that just leaves the one swale to have a look at. Behind me here is my roadside swale. This swale actually doesn't, once it gets water into it, it doesn't drain very well. With the swales, it's best if they can um, slowly drain their water into the subsoil over three to four days. But this one has quite a clay base. So it doesn't sink it in as well as it should. But it actually works really well as a diversion swale for water that runs down my little country road, which we'll have a look at a bit later, and into this swale. And then when it fills up, it feeds into my dam. This is the end of that swale. It's been dug out a little bit just here so that the water will collect and sink into the subsoil down below my berm. But when it gets really high, it does release the water which happened last night and it goes into the dam. Now this should have probably been more of a, a, a level sill spillway but it has washed out a bit of a channel but it seems to, to work okay so I just haven't got to, to doing these things really well. You can see how the water's washed that grass out, it was really flowing last night. Well, you can hear the frogs. They really love this swale because it doesn't empty with water very fast. All right, let's have a wander along here. I've got some rhubarb slowly kicking in. I did make a video on propagating rhubarb and planting these out, which I'll link. That one has been attacked by ducks, so it's not going so well. This one over here is starting to kick in a lot nicer. Again, overzealous chop and drop, but I've replanted a little plant just next to it there. Here is one of my plum trees and just further along is a second plum tree. Hopefully I'll get some plums, but I did see some rosellas on this fairly recently. I've got some daffodils that really didn't flower so I don't know what was going on with them so moving from this plum tree we've got the the second plum tree so they're really kicking into life now I've planted about seven black currants in this little section here I didn't have mulch with me at the time so I do need to do that a little bit better to help protect them but they're just starting to spring into life now there's another rhubarb which the ducks got to this one here just starting to spring into life is a pomegranate now i'm not too sure whether my climate's a bit cool for it to fruit but it is a lovely little tree regardless so I'll just make sure not to shade it out so it gets plenty of sun and we'll cross our fingers whether it produces fruit or not. 
A little Robinia just starting to come to life. That Tagasasti was chopped and dropped uh, back in autumn, so it's really kicking in again now. My cherry tree has yet to spring into life, but hopefully that will be getting some flowers on it soon. This tree here is a rescue fig. I found it in a pot down the end of my road, a bit neglected and root bound. So I dragged it home and put it in the ground and it's looking very happy. It's just kicking into life again now. Here's a couple more of my uh, rhubarb that I planted. I might have to get out here and uh, get some more mulch around them to protect them a bit. This is a heart leaf fig. It produced the most delicious figs back in autumn. I'm hoping we don't get a, a heavy frost because that will really knock these delicate leaves around. My last frost date for the last two years has been about the 30th of September, so that's still four weeks off. So let's hope this survives. Okay, so the water really feeds in through to the dam. Now this section here, that's, that's my house tank and the overflow feeds from the house tank into this swale as well and that was just broken when we, we dug it out. Listen to the frogs. One thing I have found is that there's a, a drainage point here which is not what I intended. That is where that pipe from the overflow actually had gone through to a little gully that's over there and beyond. So I'm going to have to put, I might put a, a swivel pipe in there so I can choose to put it through the gully or not. But at the moment, a lot of the water drains out through my little gully over there. Now that's one of my quince trees, which I've got tied up because I've had native rats eating the roots. So that was kind of on its side and you can see it's, I might have to secure it a bit better. It's still blowing around in the breeze. This section here, these reeds have just grown up. My intention is to have a reed bed that filters the water because it does come down off that road down this little slope here and into my swale section. So hopefully if we get enough reeds happening, it'll clean up the water a little bit more before it heads into the dam. You can see that water flowing nicely. This is the last plant or the first, depending on which way you look at it. It's an almond tree, and that's another almond tree just over there. They're newer plantings than my other almonds, so they're really just kind of kicking in. They didn't have much in the way of flowers, so I'll give them a few years before we get some nuts out of those. So that's the tour of my three swales. I love to get out and see what's growing and actually see how the swales are handling the rain. I hope you also found it interesting. Please subscribe and hit the notify button if you'd like to see more updates on all the swales and everything else I've got going here. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.